Hey everybody, it's Dr. Daria. With all this discussion about the new coronavirus, there have been a lot of terms thrown around about how infectious diseases get spread. So I wanted to hop on today and answer some questions and really just clarify some things. You know, I'm an emergency room doctor, so we deal a lot with how infections get spread and how to stop the spread of infections to other patients, to the general public, and of course, to ourselves. So here we go. There are three main categories of how infections are spread. You'll see I'm wearing a mask. I'll explain in a second, you just wait. Um, the first is via contact. So I got myself little gloves contact. Um, so you can spread an infection via direct contact, meaning the person who has the infection touches another person who does not have the infection, direct contact, they spread it. There is also indirect contact, meaning the person who has infection touches a cup. And then the person who does not have the infection touches the cup, the infection spreads to that second person. Then there are two types of, so that's the first kind is, is contact. Then there are two more types. There's contact, there's droplet, and then there's airborne or aerosol. You've probably heard a lot of these terms thrown around in the news with the latest coronavirus. So remember there's contact. Now there's droplet. The difference between droplet and aerosol is the size of the particle. So somebody coughs and if it's droplet, what they're coughing out is a larger particle. I know it's gross, but you wanted the details. It's a larger particle. So it's going to go out around three to six feet and then fall down and dissipate. So droplet, you're really only going to get that infection if you are in the room with the other person and they cough or they sneeze on you. That is different from airborne or aerosol. Now airborne or aerosol, what they cough out is a much smaller particle, which means that it can go and be suspended in the environment much longer period of time so that an infected person leaves, you the uninfected person walk in, you inhale, the aerosolized or airborne particle, and then you get the infection. Okay, so those are the three types. I wanted to explain them. Remember, there's the contact. You literally have to touch the person or touch something that they touched. There's droplet where they have to cough or sneeze on you and the particles get on your mucous membranes, your eyes, your mouth, your nose. And then there's aerosolized, which are the tiny particles. They can cough or sneeze into the room. They can leave. You walk into the room and you inhale the particles. Those are the three ways that we really spread pretty much any infection. Now let's go through what is what. So in terms of airborne and aerosolized, this is again is the most uh, contagious. So measles is actually one of the few diseases that we know for sure that there is human to human airborne or aerosolized transmission, which is why somebody with measles can be in the room and you can be on the other side of the room or come into that room afterwards and can catch the measles if you're not vaccinated, which is why it's so dangerous. There are others that are also felt to be airborne, chicken pox, um, uh, uh, SARS is felt to be, SARS, one of the coronaviruses is one of those that's felt to be primarily droplet or contact, but also could be aerosolized or airborne if somebody's having an actual um, procedure done to them. Tuberculosis is another type. Then there's droplet. Like it is felt that this current coronavirus is likely droplet, meaning that you will only get it if somebody coughs or sneezes on you. There's others. Flu is felt to mostly be droplet, although there's some thought that it could also be aerosolized, a seasonal flu rhinovirus, which causes the cold. Those are droplets. So again, so I have my masks, my way of protecting yourself. So remember the three types of spreading infection. There is contact. You protect against that with your little gloves. Aren't they lovely? Then for droplet, there's this kind of mask. You'll see this mask. This is what we'll put on. I'll often wear this in the OR or I'll wear You can wear this sometimes, but you see there's gaps here. This one is not airtight. This is what you can protect you against droplet though, because it's protecting me. It's not protecting my eyes, which is why often if I'm in the middle of a procedure in the ER, I'll also wear one of these masks and I'll wear a, a clear goggles as well to protect all my mucous membranes. But so this is what you'd use against droplet. And then we have this type of mask. It comes in many shapes. Sometimes it's called an, an N95 mask. This is what you have to have for aerosol. So if I'm seeing a patient that we know has tuberculosis, um, I will put on this kind of mask because it's actually, you see it's harder to put on, put on like this, you can put it on over your head, pull it on, and then it fits like there, it fits underneath, hold on, they get the, now you can see I can really pinch this over my face. And now it's airtight. So that is what you wear 
to protect yourself against aerosol. And we actually have to get tested for these and fitted for these in the hospital. They put you in a mask, they put this mask on you, and then they put a bigger mask on you and they spray some sugar water at you and they see if you can taste the sugar water. Um, that means that their aerosol is getting around the mask. So now you have it. The different types of ways the infections are spread. The one, the droplet, which is the middle one, which is how we think the novel coronavirus is. But the reason this is hard is because even when they know what size a particle, a disease or virus can have, we don't always know if, if it even can be airborne and aerosolized. Is that aerosolized particle actually infectious? That's why it can be really hard. And so again, SARS is one of those that they found that it was mainly droplet and contact, but they felt that in the case of specific procedures, it could be aerosolized. So that's why you can't just, you may hear different messages, why it may seem confusing, because you can't always just say, well, this virus or this infection is only spread this way. Viruses especially can be spread in a, numer a number of different ways. So there you have it. There is your answer. Quick primer on how infections are spread. I know we will be hearing many more of these terms or much more with these terms as we learn more about the coronavirus. And I just wanted you to have this little primer about how you catch these diseases. I'm Dr. Daria. Make sure to follow here because we are using the best of science and giving you that knowledge to make your lives healthier, better, and easier. Let me know what else you want to know about and I will see you next time. Bye-bye, y'all.